So what is this? Okay, yeah, this looks to me like ringworm. Okay, and what is ringworm? Ringworm is a, a fungal infection of the skin. It's incredibly common. It's got nothing to do with worms whatsoever. I think it was a, when it was the first, worst name ever. It is because if it, yeah. if it was called like I don't know something fa like something fancy or just something that sounded normal, you know, you say to someone you got ringworm, they think even fucking, even ring rash, oh, yeah, ring rash. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It makes me think of when your dog had worms and you just scoop his yeah, butt across the carpet. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's a terrible name. It's confused people for for decades. Yeah. Hundreds it needs, of years it, needs it needs changing. It needs changing. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, oh, but it's it's called ringworm because you can see it's got this ring appearance. It often appears like as a little small badge or a plaque is the, the technical term on the skin, or, uh, which is a bit red, a bit scaly. And then it spreads outwards in this ring form. And the active edge is that red bit on the edge. That's the active bit where the fungus is in the skin. It's growing, it's multiplying. And that spreads outwards. And as it grows outwards, the center resolves, actually heals. And it, and it can grow out in that way. And that, that's that kind of characteristic pattern that you're looking for. It's not unlike staph infections, bacterial infections. It tends not to be red and painful. It's, it's dry rather than wet. It's, it's more kind of a scaly type infection. But crucially, it's it, the actual underlying cause is very different. This is now a fungus and not a bacteria. And f fungi are fascinating. This is uh, what we call tinea corporis, is the official medical term, and it's, ca it's caused by a dermatophyte infection, something like trichophyton, and they are comprised of little spores, which are like little cells, tiny little beads, and then hyphae, which are like these little uh, fronds that grow out of them. And those, those tiny bead-like cells are so light and small they they can travel in the air and they can be transmitted from one person to another very easily. In the world around us, we're surrounded by fungal spores. They're like the seeds of the the uh, the the, the uh, skin infection world, if you like. You know, when you you leave a yogurt in the fridge for too long and then you open it up three weeks later, midnight, and you've got back from the pub and you're starving, and it's furry inside, and you think, how the, how how the fuck did that get in there? It's because that fungus that's grown in yogurt is just ubiquitous. It's, it's in the world around us all times. And because it's so transmissible, because they're so successful as an organism at moving from one location to the next, these can really spread very readily in close contact environments like um, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu mm. gyms. Yeah, I, I think this is probably on par, I'd say, with staff, maybe even worse, in fact. For prevalence, it seems. I think it's worse. Yeah, I yeah. think I think people get the odd staph infection, but m <laughs> most people get get ringworm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so you mentioned like the the middle bit resolving a little bit, and you said it's not normally too red and angry looking. Yeah. Then we got this. Yeah. Get you said that's a perhaps a more developed <laughs> bit of ringworm there. You <laughs> could still see that the edge. So it's um, yeah. it's got this kind of scalloped edge. And the edge is slightly more raised, but the whole plaque that is is quite scaly, um, and and over time that that centre piece there will start to resemble healthy normal skin as that heals, and then that that leading edge there will will expand outwards. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, it is generally a self-limiting infection. If you didn't treat this at all, over time, your body's own immune system would most likely clear this. But in that process, you're going to probably spread it to everyone around you <laughs> that you have close contact with. Uh, and it is a bit uncomfortable and unpleasant. So it, it's definitely worth getting it sorted out. Yeah. And th 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 this is the one that I've seen leave a few scars as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've got a scar on my leg now. Can do, yeah. Looking at it. Yeah. yeah, it's a big scar on my leg from it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, let's look at a couple more pictures. Um, so we've got this one, and I've put this in actually because the, 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 the last couple on the arm, very obvious. Yeah. But but this in the hairline seems to be like the, a, a, not, again, where people miss it. And I know I've had, uh, you know, sort of friends over the years where, you know, you'll be sat on the mat and they'll, they'll turn around and they've got something right up on the back of their leg. Uh, you know, they're never going to see it there. So that's obviously one place on the body where you may not see it. Um, this, it feels like is another. And I, and I wonder if people have got long hair or long beards or whatever. I, I, feel, I feel like this is a real issue because unless you're really digging through your scalp, and I know you're pretty good with yeah, this, but yeah. a lot of lads and girls probably wouldn't be. I mean, yeah, like this is the same thing, right? Just in the hairline. 
yeah, you can see all the features there, that scalloped edge there. It's got, it's got this kind of disc appearance to it. And, and sometimes with this, you can even get a bit of non-scarring hair loss as well. Interesting. And this is called tinea capitis. Capitis just means head. And it can be a bit more difficult to treat. Once you start getting tinea or fungal infection in the scalp, it's, it doesn't always respond to an, antifungal creams. And in some cases, and this is much more common in, in younger adults and children, you might need antifungal tablets to, to resolve this. So is that why some of the, some of the lads at the gym, they've, uh, especially in their heads and around their heads, they seem to get it back and they're like pretty frustrated because they'll, they'll get it back and they'll be like, oh, I've been, you know, I've only come back two weeks and then they'll find like they'll get their hair cut and see there's another little mark it's not nothing major but it'll be something maybe a little bit smaller than that little circle little mark yeah. and is that why it keeps coming back yeah, because it it's be in the hair yeah it penetrates quite deep into the scalp and it, oh, it can be yeah that, it can be tricky it? to, because, to, to yeah, shift th because then they you, you see hear them and they're like oh you know I've, I've trained with someone again who's got it or someone else has got it and it and it may not be that they've even trained with someone else again it's it's still on their skin it's still on there so if it's in the scalp is that typically is it that's kind of a worse version than on your arm or does it is it done well like that? It depends. I mean, this that actually look, this is on the hairline. So it's really, this is borderline country. And I think this probably would respond to topical or cream-based treatments. But as I said, the, the further up into your scalp it goes, the, the harder it's going to be to potentially to treat. Yeah, okay. And in regards to the treatment, I've popped this one in here as well because this is obviously using a, a cream. Um, so... I think Doctarin, Doctarin. Yeah, it seems to call. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the one that I've used, and I and I've yeah. put this picture in because I was told by another GP, um, and I think this is a common mistake that people make. Is she was quite specific that when you put the cream on, you need to do like a two centimeter perimeter around uh, the actual ring um, in order to treat it. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah, that, that's good. Good practice, and and you can actually buy a lot of these creams over the counter. You don't necessarily need a prescription if it's something you know that you've you get frequently and you've had that diagnosis before any uh, imidazole cream such as myconazole clotrimazole turbinafine they're usually available over the counter and apply that cream twice a day liberally like this usually for about a week uh, and if it hasn't responded at all in that time then, then definitely get checked out and make sure there's nothing else going on and i think the other thing that she may have said is that you need to continue it after the rash is gone because this is something that i found and i think you just touched on it as well is i had a i had a, a ring on my arm and it got quite angry put the cream on it it went away i stopped creaming after a while it then popped back up yeah. um did it again it, three times it came back in the same spot and the first one, it was just one clear ring. And then it actually came in two little couple of patches, almost like portions of the original one. And then in the third time it came back as a full ring again. So what's happening there? It's, it again, it depends on how established that infection is. And also everyone responds differently to treatment and it's possible to under treat, to stop your treatment course prematurely and for it, then that, that um, organism to rebound. Uh, and it, yeah, like you say, it can be quite hard to know when do I complete the treatment. And again, it's really key to monitor it, your, the response. And if it's shrinking down quite quickly, you're likely to need a shorter course. But if it's a big lesion that you're dealing with, you, you might need to treat for you know two, three weeks potentially. It really depends on what you're what you're dealing with. And and how long is it um, once you start creaming? How long is it contagious for? Uh, so with tinea like this, it it's not that contagious once it's treated once you've been on antibiotics for again two to three days in normal cases that would stop that would kill most of the the active uh, fungus in in that area and it's not then going to be sending spores out into the world and, and your into your training partners uh, so actually it's shorter than you might think two two to three days of of good solid treatment is normally enough and then as a, I would say as a precaution, it might be helpful if you're able to, to cover this up with some kind of occlusive tape when you're training, at least as a, a matter of courtesy, um, even once you've, you've so got it under control. So people, a lot control. of the times, they hide them with rash guards. So they wear like a long sleeve t-shirt. Would that be yeah, suffice or not? That's not going to no. suffice because as we, as we mentioned, with those spores, they're, they're almost microscopic. They're tiny and a porous thing like a rash guard that is not going to stop something that small it'll just pass through so you say they're, they're with antibiotics but if they're just using say for example dactorin 
just yeah. to get rid of the cream. Uh, oh, so I might have said antibiotics. Yeah, what sorry. I meant was antifungals. So okay, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. That, that's right, okay, in- yeah. incredibly confusing, isn't okay, it? Yeah. yeah, this is not an antibiotic sensitive infection. Okay. This needs an antifungal in, in, in midazole. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So you start using the cream. Two or three days, it's starting to just die down a little bit. Yeah. Um, so at that point, you're comfortable that people can get back on the mats. Yeah. In th- again, it de- I think what would be helpful for gym owners is to have a clear policy on this. So it's fair for everyone. Uh, and it, it just makes it, makes it uh, you know, transparent on what the expectation is on those people that are training. Yeah. But the g- general advice is, yeah, three days of antibiotics is normally enough to prevent this from being infective. Yeah. And then just, just circling back to the, the, the point I made a minute ago, because I'm not sure if we, we come to a conclusion. Um, but... You do you then need to continue with that cream for a period of time, and how long would that period be typically? Well, I'd say the small lesion about a week is often enough, but again, if it if it comes back, you might need to treat for longer. It really depends on how it responds and the size, etc. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I don't have a picture of this, but there's an example of a, a friend of ours who we trained with who had a, a real issue with this, and he got it up the side of his face, up over his head. Um, and that was not going away on its own. It, it put him out for about five, six months, wasn't it? He said. Well, what happened with that was he went to a GP and the GP gave him a cream with hydrocortisone in it instead of uh, like Bactorin. I don't know what the difference is exactly, but he gave him, um, it's still like an antifungal cream, but it's got, it's got hydrocortisone in it. So I think the hydrocortisone doesn't kill it the same way as Bactorin does or something. And it spread even further. And then we switch creams took him a while but again it went onto his head like you said so if it's gone onto his head and his hair it, it mm. probably is that other version that's probably a lot more difficult to get rid of yeah there are lots of combination creams where antifungal is is paired with a topical steroid and the reason the steroids in there is because this is a bit unpleasant it's there's that the fungus in the skin causes inflammation and that steroid is treating the inflammation and the antifungal bit is treating the fungus. It's very common that the steroid doesn't stop the antifungal cream from working and it's very common to prescribe them together. The, the, what we do sometimes see, there is another skin condition that can look like this, which is called discoid eczema. So it's a form of eczema that is like a, a badge-like area of redness on the skin and that is steroid responsive. That's often treated with just steroid by itself. But if you're you'll prescribe the steroid for possible eczema and it's actually a fungal infection like this. What's interesting is the that infection goes absolutely nuts. The steroid actually reduces the immune response in the skin and this infection actually thrives rather than shrinks. And it also changes in its shape and appearance and it starts looking really weird and it makes it even harder to diagnose. And the medical term for that is tinea incognito. So that's a fungal infection that's been treated with steroids by itself and it's gone weird, it's got out of hand and what it really needs is an antifungal cream. So it's interesting how steroids can interact with fungal skin infections and actually really muddy the waters. 